Ooh, hello, E3. How's uh, Wednesday? Um, joining me for an exciting conversation about gaming, sports, where they intersect, and the growth of 5G are Chad Ochocinco. Come on, Chad. And his cousin, they both just got back from a family reunion. Boy, boy. All right, Jen. All right, so Chad, if I may call you Chad. Yeah, Chad Ocho. Ocho, what, okay. Um, let's start with you. I think you should be credited with being not just one of the first professional athletes, but one of the first elite professional athletes. Mm, I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that <was> nice. <laughs> Six Pro Bowls or something. Um, who <coughs> brought gaming to the masses, mm -hmm. right? Like you really engaged bringing the sports community, the gaming community together, mm -hmm. but why'd you do it? What was so exciting about gaming for you? I mean, for me, that was, that was, um, that was my peace of mind. That was something that I needed to get away from the, the strenuous stress that came with the game of football at the time. And so most people find value in relationships and that being their peace. And for me, it was always, always gaming. Because no matter what, you know, something about being in that space just relaxed me and just made me feel at ease. Even when, even when I'm losing, you know, it, it just... Losing it just, in games or losing on the field? Losing in games. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> losing in games. It's just that's, that's that, that peace and that's the only thing that, that really mattered to me at that time. Well, you talked about relationships, but that's also part of what you were doing with your following. Yeah. You know, you're building yeah. a relationship with them through gaming. Right. So how is that special? It's really special for the fact that if it wasn't for gaming, I wouldn't have been able to meet some some great people, you know, especially in the gaming community now. And now and, um, what I've been able to do is not only meet them, but like if it wasn't for gaming and, and technology in general, I would never be able to be on a panel like this or meet Boy Boy or just be a <laughs> part of the FIFA gaming community as, as big as I am now. And it's been really dope. So it obviously comes from a really authentic place. Very. I've been doing this for a very long time. I think I started on Atari with Qbert. I mean, I'm not that, that old. That, that no. goes so far. <laughs> <laughs> that goes so far back. And, and and for me, gaming is extremely huge. And if it wasn't for football, I think I'd be much better at it because football took up too much of my time. Do you think that you've improved as a gamer since you retired from the NFL? Yeah, I'm the best FIFA player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what about Wait, What about some of the they, other Did games? you laugh? Because if you want to lose, let me know. Oh. <laughs> I go for you guys up there too. Um, all right. So, you know, you talk about. I mean, obviously, you're an incredible competitor. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you like to compete and celebrate yeah. in a real way. It's very contagious. So, how do you funnel that passion? Whether you're doing it on the football field. Mm -hmm on the soccer pitch, on the game, is there, a, do you have an approach? Do you prepare a certain way? No, I just put in countless hours. Oh yeah? Countless hours. Like Doing a lot of, lot of hours just playing. Reps. Just playing continuously over and over, you know, trying to understand the mechanics of every game and abuse it as much as possible. Okay, all right. Well, I wanna talk um, to you a little bit, boy boy. Don't, don't feel so left out over there. No, I'm good, I'm, okay. I'm enjoying listening. Um, I'm learning a lot. You are a self-proclaimed OG of the League Pros from back in the day, so obviously you've been in this game for a while. Give me the origin story. Um, so yeah, I started playing games when I was a kid. My dad bought me a Super Nintendo, started messing around with Mario and Mega Man stuff when I was just a baby. And then when I got older, I started playing online games. I love the idea of connecting with people around the world and competing and just being able to you know, prove that I'm, I'm one of the best at whatever game I was playing. Um, and it started with different, you know, massive multiplayer online games. And then, you know, when I was in high school, when I was uh, a junior, I found this game called League of Legends. And I had no idea what it was about. I never played Dota or anything like that. I, I downloaded it off just like some forum post or something like that. And then I started playing it, got really good at the game, started beating people. And I just love that thrill. Um, it, it really drives me. I, I actually started playing chess competitively when I was a youngster. I played it all wow. throughout my life. So I'd go to tournaments and stuff, like state championships, all that. And so playing online games like kind of was my next evolution of that 
competitive passion and drive and, and League of Legends was the perfect uh, outlet for me to really follow that through and see what I could do. And yeah, I was just playing League on the side, you know, in high school studying after homework and, you know, before I had to go to bed and I would just go in there on the online world, on the Rift and, you know, beat people from all around the world and it was just such a great feeling to... You're just humbly saying that, just beat people from all around the world. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean <laughs> no shame. I, I was, I was, am one of the best and it's a great feeling to just be able to prove that um, in a virtual, you know, environment and against people that are giving it their all and yeah, it's one of the, the greatest passions and super grateful to have that. So what I find so interesting is that we are sitting next to one of the best wide receivers of his time, maybe still, and one of the best gamers, and you're both talking about competition, right? And the reps necessary to take and how the passion, if you could talk more about that thrill and how there's obvious crossover between mm -hmm. athletics, mm -hmm. sports, and the virtual gaming world. Well, to be good at anything that you do, even for those that are out here, you know you have to understand you have to put in countless hours of work. It's no different than me playing football and wanting to be, before you said I was elite, but before I was elite, what did I have to do? I had to put in the work and consistently understand what's my niche and what's going to make me special before I even got to that stage of being just that, which mm -hmm. is elite. And the same thing for me, it comes into gaming and me wanting to understand every dynamic and every mechanic of whatever game it is that I'm playing. For me, that game just happened to be FIFA. And so me trying to abuse as much as possible without cheating and understanding <laughs> it and just being the best. The game is, and another thing that I just, I don't want to throw this out there. A lot of people say that gaming isn't, it's not a sport. This is actually a sport. So when you take football, football, the game of football is all, it's a mental game. Mm -hmm. You take away the physicality of it, it's a mental game because that's all it is. Everybody's fast, everybody's strong, so how do you beat the person across from you? The same as gaming, it's a mental game. It's a chess match. Well, so you just, it, it, I mean, often football is referred to as contact chess, and you just said you started playing chess, and so can you talk a little bit about how strategy plays in to what you guys do? Yeah, I think Chad hit the nail on the head. Um, at the, especially for, for online games and esports and competitive gaming and stuff like that, it's all about you know the brain, the mind. Yes, there are hand-eye coordination. You know, you have to be quick with the mouse, quick with the keyboard. There's mechanics stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it, it does all at, at every level kind of boil down to you know strategy and um, planning and execution and all that stuff. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into being a great you know athlete and also a great you know esports competitive gamer so I think there there are definitely parallels to be made and you know with what I was saying like um, when I was trying to become one of the best league players I tried to learn everything I could about the game I studied it from every angle learned every mechanic every champion every item every build thought about you know stuff that other people weren't thinking about mm -hmm. trying to come up with new strategies and just break the meta and go to that next level so I could get an edge on the other people that were competing to be the best and you know, it, it does work and it's a big part of, you know, how you can find that, find that next level of success. When you, when you think about it, when you think about the NFL, it's the best of the best around the world. Every, everybody's good week to week, even, you know, even though some teams get a bad rap, it's still the NFL, mm -hmm. you know? And so, like, take for instance, say the Browns had an 0-16 season, but if you match them up against anybody else, they would probably lose outside of this the NFL criteria on what makes your NFL player. The same thing for me, goes with gaming when I'm playing. When you, when you play with the elite players, everybody's good. So there's really no room for error. So how do you minimize error and counter whatever his weaknesses are? Mm -hmm. And there's only one way to do that, the repetition and just doing it over and over. And knowing and your opponent, and, and it sounds like. But it's hard to know your opponent when you've, you've never played him before. I see. So what do you do? All right, well, you were talking about that a little bit in League of Legends, like you can study people's playing style and maybe prepare for that. Yeah, you can. Um, you can study replays. You can study people's personal streams, see basically everything they're doing, everything they're thinking about, all their mouse movements and stuff like that. And actually, uh, recently, like two weeks ago, Riot introduced something called ProView, which basically lets you watch the professional LCS matches, the highest level of competition, and you can literally see what they're doing on their computer from their perspective during every professional match. So that's a huge resource for you know up-and-comers or just anyone trying to get better at the game and learn to just literally see 
what this person is doing on a micro level, and then they can learn from that and try to incorporate it into their own play, which is pretty fascinating because that just introduces a whole next le layer of you know improvement and learning and coachability and stuff like that, which I think I think there's a lot of awesome things that are going to come from so that. You're both studying the playbook. You're both <laughs> researching. You're both grinding tape. You're both taking reps, and while you're doing all this the space is exploding and crossing over. So I want to know, what have both of you noticed um, in terms of a shift or a change? Like, what are the new things that you're noticing? I mean, you just noted, you mentioned this thing that Riot is doing. What are some other ways the gaming space has changed since you have grown up in it? Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> when I was a kid in high school and I was playing League or playing games online, it was definitely considered kind of like you know, a waste of time. Like, did you finish all your other stuff? Why, okay, that's good, but why are you playing games? Like, you should be, you know, doing more extracurriculars, you should be studying, you should be taking extra classes, stuff like that. And now, not to say that, you know, every time spent playing games is considered, you know, productive, because <laughs> obviously it's not, but a lot more people understand the fact that the gaming space has exploded, esports is legit, like, there's hundreds of millions of people around the world playing these games, competing, watching these games, the scene has exploded to a point where it's never, you know, completely unprecedented. There's, you know, countless NFL, NBA teams coming in and participating in franchise leagues in the LCS or Overwatch League or Call of Duty, whatever, whatever it has, uh, whatever it is, and, you know, lots of sports games too. And they're cementing the future of esports and gaming and for future generations of kids to think, hey, like, my favorite, you know, esports athletes, like, these guys are legit, this is a real thing, this is something that I could maybe, you know, have a dream to participate and compete in one day. When you're a youngster and you're watching, you know, chat in the NFL, like, you think, wow, I wish I could do that, but obviously the chance is low. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes for esports, right? People watch, you know, the greats like Faker, Bjergsen, up on stage in the LCS competing, and they're, like, inspired by these, these gamers nowadays, which never existed before. People got, you know, you got made fun of, you got laughed at for playing video games when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was put down for doing so, and now it's exploded to the point where it's actually legit. You can actually be a cool, you know, productive person and, and just accomplish so many things um, just by playing video games. So to you, the le like the space being legitimized has mm -hmm. been really, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Chad, what about mm -hmm. for you? Is there anything cool that you've noticed? I mean, the fact that gaming has become cool okay. is enough in its, <laughs> in, enough in its sense. Um, for me, back when I was playing, gaming was done by a few people. But if you go back to my younger days, even though I'm really, I'm 51, so I'm really old now. But it's like my grandma, why get out the house, go do something. Every, you know, it, it was more so. It was more about being at the house, and everybody's not going to make it to the NFL. Everybody's not going to be an NBA player. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can find your niche and find something that you're good at in, in using gaming. Okay, you don't have to be LeBron, but maybe you can be the best 2K player. You know, maybe you don't have to be Chad or you don't have to be Odell or Antonio Brown. Maybe you can be the best Madden player in the world. Mm -hmm. You can find your lane and just become great at it. And it gives those that might not make it an, another lane, another opportunity to do something they like and make a little bit of money to buy McDonald's. What about, <laughs> what about expressing creativity within the space? Because I think for you, you did a really good job in the NFL of finding your own voice. They took s right. your money away uh, quite they a did. few times. It was frowned upon. Yes. Um, but you still kept your voice, right? And are you, do you have more of that freedom in, say, the gaming space? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I've watched your YouTube channel. There's a <laughs> lot of freedom going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, for me, I was able to have that freedom because I was good at what I did. Mm -hmm. And that same space when it comes to gaming, it's there for you to do as usual, but you have to be good at what you do. Mm -hmm. You can't be, you can't have this freedom and then actually not be very good or not be enjoyable for those fans that are watching. Right. Joey? Um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, we all kind of enjoy the freedoms we have. The nice thing about like streaming and esports and stuff like that is yeah, there are rules, there are, there are, you know, people that keep us in mind, but at the end of the day, like you said, you saw my, my videos, like, I can kind of decide how I want to present myself and talk to my audience and all that stuff, so I think that is something that is very nice and definitely don't take for granted, but we try to use that platform to, at least I do, to have a positive influence on the people that watch and all that. I love it. We're studying positive influences. 
legitimizing the space for next generations, but all of that is only done with the growth of technology. And so to help us explore the technology a little bit deeper and what it means for gaming, I want to welcome two more people to the stage. First, Christian Granalda, who's a director at Horizon 5 TV. And hey, have a Rachel Hoagland, who is head of gaming and esports at the NFL. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. All right, so Christian, I mean, listen, you're wearing it on your shirt. We are all <laughs> talking about 5G. It is everything. But like, what does it mean? Help yeah. me out. <laughs> so, so I think, how many, how many have heard about this 5G thing, right? It's kind of this amorphous, hey, it's this amazing technology. What is it and what does it mean for me? And so a couple of things. One, it's already here. So Verizon last year launched what we call 5G Home. And most people don't understand that it's not just the phones in your pocket that get connected by the 5G network. It's also your home, your apartment, right? Um, and so here in Los Angeles, in Houston, in Indianapolis, and in Sacramento, last year we were already turning on the world's first 5G commercial product, which is delivering broadband to more people so they can go and access amazing uh, connectivity. So that's the first thing. It's, it's not just the phone in your pocket. And then you take it further, and well, what does it mean for the phone? So this year, we were the first in the world to go and launch the first 5G mobile network. So we've got phones that are now live in Chicago and Minneapolis. And we've also announced that there's 30 cities that are going to be live in the United States by the end of the year. So a lot of times people ask, well, when is it going to get here? Well, it's already here. And you should start really thinking about what 5G is for you today. Cool. So it sounds to me like there's a lot that 5G can do to enhance esports and gaming. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. I, I, I think a lot of people think, OK, I can go and stream my Twitch stream faster, and it's going to be yeah. higher fidelity, and I'm going to be able to uh, interact and see that high quality in 4K, right? Streaming, absolutely. Almost table stakes, right? When you think about the capabilities of 5G, it's a fundamentally different network. Right? It's got you know, latency. We talk about latency, and that's the speed of the reaction time. And so we were talking earlier about, hey, before I go into that, that online game, I'm going to go and check my ping time. Right? And if I've got 200 milliseconds or higher, maybe I'll just sit back. In a 5G world, it's just a given that on mobile, in your home, the ping time is great. And that latency allows everyone to go and compete at the highest level, and no one to ever sit back and say, maybe I won't go into that room. And so when you think about that and, the, sp and the, the, the ability to go and stream at a high, high bandwidth, what does that mean for developers? Mm -hmm. We were talking about competition, right? I think when you look at the folks here at E3, these are the best in the world at building the next generation games. And if you look at the gaming industry overall, you want to keep pushing the envelope. You want to keep making the next Twitch, the next interactivity, the next feature. And so we think that game developers are really, really the ones that can go and start using these tools to go and build these new experiences that weren't available before because you didn't have the capabilities of 5G. All right. Well, is there um, a reel that we can watch that maybe demonstrates some of this? <laughs> yeah. So, so we're, we're super excited about um, all these capabilities. And what we wanted to go and do mm -hmm. was partner with an amazing brand like the NFL. Mm -hmm and bring to life the opportunity to go and use these 5G tools for developers to actually participate in what we call the Verizon 5G NFL Mobile Gaming Challenge. And so we want to go and start to have people develop on the network with the NFL and Verizon first so that we can start building those experiences uh, today. So let's take a look at that. So what that means is, starting today, developers who have an amazing game idea can go to verizon5glabs.com slash NFL and submit their idea for the future of what a mobile game can be in a 5G world. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean for you? Well, we're going to give $400,000 to two winners to go and develop those games yep. and bring them to life. In addition, we're going to give them access to 
the Verizon 5G. <laughs> I think Chad's gonna, Chad's gonna start making games. Uh -uh. A couple He's more, a couple more necklaces for Chad. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> Get the coding skills going too. Um, we're gonna go and make sure that you have access to the 5G ultra wideband network. We're gonna give you access to the 5G labs so you can go and work with us, experts in gaming, experts mm -hmm. from the NFL to bring these technologies to life. And really, the most exciting part for us is I think we're gonna be able to show yeah. off what those games look like in the Super Bowl next year down in Miami. And yeah. right, where's the Super Bowl being held? Chad's hometown, so you know you're gonna be part of it. <laughs> 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 All right, so Rachel, this is for you. I mean, obviously the NFL is really leaning into gaming. Yes. How come? Uh, I think it's a couple reasons. You know, first of all, more and more people are playing games across multiple devices than ever before. And it's really important as we look to build audience to think through how we can reach a younger generation of fans. And gaming is something that they're incredibly engaged with, and it allows us to put our brand in front of them in a place where they already are. And you have witnessed this because you've been in this gaming space for many more years than we need to say, but you have been conquering this space really at the forefront, like all, like Chad mm -hmm. and Joey in this space in a way that a lot of people haven't. So you've witnessed its growth. And from your POV, how do you think it's changed? What's the exciting piece about how yeah. it's changed? Not just like how it's grown, sure. but like what, what makes it so exciting yeah. and vibrant now? Um, so, you know, I share a lot of the similar thoughts that Chad and Boy Boy said earlier about the accessibility and the lift of the stigma. But I think the biggest piece is that games have become incredibly social, right? And they've become destinations for folks to exchange uh, content ideas and social interaction in a way that historically they never have. I think the other big piece that, uh, where games have changed a lot is that gamers uh, have created, publishers have given them a platform to actually co-create games with them in a way that historically we've not seen, right? You just user-generated content is something that's fueling a lot of how games have evolved and become more social. Yeah. Those two things. In addition to, you know, the technology advancements, we fully expect those that have increased the accessibility. Gaming's more widely accepted, but the social piece and the content creation piece I see are the two biggest drivers. And both um, of those seem to really enhance engagement, which is what yep. we are all looking for, the opportunity to connect and engage. And so yeah. with the technology, we're boosting the space. And within the space, players like Chad and, and Joey are making it really possible and engaging with others. So before we, we close this whole thing out, I'm going to ask you one by one, Chad, uh -huh. you're going to go first. What, um, what do you think the future holds for gaming? Not just now, but where else can we go? I mean, with the way technology is so advanced now, not knowing what's to come is what's exciting yeah. for me. I have no idea what's going to happen next, and I'm, I'm just, I always get the finished product because I'm not on the inside like these two. <laughs> so being that I'm on the outside looking in, I just can't wait to see what's next and always make me a part of it. My number's still yeah. the same. <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, just from when I was a youngster to now, we've seen how far gaming and esports and you know the the network and community around games has grown to levels that we could never imagine would exist um, back in the day. And I just think from where we are now, with how optimistic the future looks, how much technology is advancing, how far the games are developing, the esports scenes, you know, these long-lasting franchises coming in and coming in and saying, we are here for the long run, we're here for the next, you know, few decades and we are here to support these games and the communities around them. I just feel like that's such a baseline platform where, you know, gaming and esports and Twitch and YouTube and the, just the content and the communities and the fan bases around them have so much potential to grow and honestly, I'm just excited to be a part of it and, you know, see where we can see where we can go next, but it's it's exciting. Christian. I, look, I think it's it's about the players, it's about the gamers, it's about the developers and it's about people. And Technology is only great if you can go and help bring people together. And who knew five years ago that we'd be sitting here with an NFL all-star and, and, and a gaming all-star talking about the future together. And we think that 5G and ultra-wideband starts to create this sort of blend between console, PC, mobile, connecting all that together. And what we want to do is help give those tools to the community, to the people to go and use it because we know gamers are gonna go and push the envelope more than any other industry out there. Nice. 
Rachel, wrap us up. Yeah, here. so <laughs> to build on all of those things, you know, I look at all that and I just see endless possibilities, right? That we're on this forefront of great infrastructure and technological advancement and that just gives us a blank canvas for creators and publishers and gamers to take gaming into the future. So, you know, I would say the possibilities are endless and we should be really excited about where gaming is headed. So it's not just that the sky is the limit, but like the cloud isn't even a limit? <laughs> That's Does right, that the cloud yeah. is not even a limit. <laughs> um, all right, so well, thank you guys all for being here. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. Um, I'm really excited for all of you developers who've been itching to get your hands on some 5G. If you want more information on the Verizon 5G NFL Mobile Gaming Challenge, you can visit Verizon's booth, and that's number 5312 in the West Hall. Again, number 5312 in the West Hall. And the website is verizon5glabs.com slash NFL, verizon5glabs.com slash NFL. Thank you, guys. See you at the Super Bowl. Woo!